The Merkava tank has a chance to be rehabilitated. In this video, we'll talk about the Israeli Merkava tank. This content was created very hard in connection with the recent terrible events in Israel, where today's hero, unfortunately, has not yet shown itself properly. But in any case, we need to tell our viewers the truth, no matter how unpleasant it may be. So the Merkava tank is probably the most unusual in the world, and before the present events, considered by many experts as even the best tank in the world. At least the authoritative American analytical agency Forecast International, which every year produces a rating of the best tanks in the world. In recent years, the Merkava almost always takes the leading position in it, ahead of the German Leopard and the Russian T-90. Why hasn't it proved itself so far in the current Arab-Israeli war? Why did the IDF lose 14 Merkava in the first three days of fighting? In this video, we'll try to understand it. Throughout its short history of independence, Israel has had to fight to defend its borders and defend itself against terrorist attacks. To survive, the Israelis had to pay great attention to the development of the armed forces and military-industrial complex. And among the IDF armaments, the Merkava tank has a special place. In terms of its layout and some of its characteristics, it's a truly unique combat vehicle which has no analogs among modern battle tanks. The peculiarity of the tank is its development for a specific theater of war and its sharpening for tactical techniques that are most often used by IDF tankers. Since 1979, four modifications of the Merkava have been created – MK1, MK2, MK3, and MK4. Currently, work is underway to develop the next modification of the tank. The Merkava 5 will be a new generation fighting vehicle, unlike its predecessors. Development of the tank began in 1970, after the British refused to sell Chifton MK-1 to the Israelis. This was a complete surprise for the country's leadership, and it was decided to create its combat vehicle. The developers were led not by an engineer, but by a professional tanker, Yisrael Tal, who went through the entire Second World War, stood at the origins of the IDF, and participated in all Arab-Israeli wars. This is a rather unusual situation for the world tank industry. Tal is considered the founding father of the Israeli Armored Forces. Having analyzed the Six-Day War and the Sinai Campaign, Tal concluded that all the existing main battle tanks at that time were not too suitable for the Israeli Army. What was needed was a new vehicle whose characteristics would best suit the nature of the theater of operations and Israeli defense doctrine. The main focus of the new tank was on its firepower, maneuverability, and most importantly, the protection of the crew. Even after the vehicle was hit, the tankers had to stay alive. Another important feature of Israel, which largely determined the appearance and characteristics of the Merkava, is its compactness. The fact that the dimensions and weight of the tanks are set to the greatest extent by the standards of rail transportation, Israel created a combat vehicle to defend its territory where it's quite possible to use road platforms for transportation. Plus, the desert soil can withstand a greater load than, for example, the soil in Ukraine. And there's no spring and fall thaw in Israel. Therefore, the designers had less stringent restrictions on the weight and dimensions of the developed vehicle. So today, the Merkava is one of the heaviest and maybe even the heaviest tanks. The tactics of the Israeli armored forces involve firing from well-prepared positions on sloping heights. The tank's turret is very vulnerable to such use, so the designers tried to reduce its frontal projection and place most of the combat compartment in the hull. In early 1979, the first production Merkava MK-1 vehicles entered service. 250 units of this modification were produced. Since then, four generations of combat vehicles have been created. The main difference between the Merkava and other modern tanks is its layout. The engine and transmission are located in the front part of the hull, while the fighting compartment occupies the middle and rear parts. In the aft part of the tank, there's a troop compartment which can carry infantrymen, wounded, additional ammunition, or replacement crew. This unique design idea essentially turns the Merkava into a versatile vehicle capable of serving as a BMP and a PC. Another non-standard solution is the design of the tank's hull and turret. They're cast. The Merkava's armor has large angles of inclination, the engine compartment is shifted to the right side of the tank, and on the left side there's a control compartment with a driver's seat. He has three observation devices, but due to the shift of his seat to the left, his view is severely limited. There's an armored partition between the engine compartment and the fighting compartment. 
The main fuel supply is located in the rear part of the armored over track recesses with air intakes in their front part. The tank's turret is wedge-shaped, which helps to increase the number of ricochets when hitting the front of the turret. The Merkava turret has spaced armor, with additional protection elements located between the two main walls. The turret has seats for three crew members, the loader, tank commander, and gunner. In the rear of the tank, there's a compartment that can accommodate up to six paratroopers and four stretchers with wounded or additional ammunition. However, the tactics of using Merkava now do not provide transportation for paratroopers. Usually, the rear compartment is used for additional shells. The Merkava MK-1 is armed with a 105mm M68 cannon, designed in the USA and produced in Israel under license. It's armed with 62 rounds of ammunition. The cannon is paired with a Belgian 7.62mm mag machine gun produced under license. Two more 7.62mm machine guns are mounted on the turret roof. Above the gun barrel is a 12.7mm machine gun, which is remotely operated. Also mounted on the turret is a 60mm mortar. Its ammunition is 30 mines. The engine is an American AVDS 1795A turbocharged diesel engine. The transmission's CD856B, also made in the USA, and it was modified by local specialists. The suspension is spring-loaded, Christie type. On each side, there are six rubberized support rollers and five support rollers. The tracks are all metal, and their width is 640 millimeters. The weight of the tank was 56 tons. The Merkaba MK-1 took part in the 1982 Lebanon War, and after the war, the Israeli designers created the Merkava MK-2 modification, which took into account the experience of the first combat use of the tank. The turret armor was reinforced with additional shields with combined armor, and similarly, the protection of the sides was improved. The mortar was moved inside the turret so that it could be fired without leaving the vehicle. On the turret were mounted baskets for various equipment, which were additional protection. For protection against shape charge ammunition, balls on chains were suspended from the turret. The tank received a more advanced ballistic calculator and rangefinder, and later a thermal imager was installed. The weight of the Merkava MK2 increased to 60 tons. The Merkava MK3 received additional armor protection on the sides and turret, and a more powerful 120mm MG251 smooth bore gun was installed. The ammunition load was reduced to 46 rounds. Laser sensors were installed to warn the crew of the danger of guided missile fire. This modification received the Matador 3 fire control system. The weight of the Merkava MK3 increased to 65 tons. The Merkava MK4 was put into service in 2004. It was equipped with a new diesel engine, GD883 General Dynamics, with an output of 1500 horsepower and a rank RK325 transmission with 5 speeds. The turret shape was significantly changed due to a new configuration of armor modules, and the gun received a mask. The main armor was also strengthened. The loader lost his hatch, and the commander's hatch became so massive that it opened mechanically. There was improved visibility for the mechanic, driver, and he received a rear-view video camera. The underbody mine protection became more reliable. The tank commander received a new panoramic sight with a thermal imager. The gunner's sight is mounted on the roof. The tank was equipped with a new Syad Bias. The Merkava MK4 is equipped with a new MG253 gun, which can withstand higher pressure of powder gases. In the turret recess, there's an automatic loader which holds 10 shells. The rest of the ammunition is located in the stern of the tank. After the Second Lebanon War in 2006, the tank was fitted with an active defense system abbreviated as CAS Trophy. The Merkava MK4M was designated as the Merkava MK4M, the trophy's designed to counter anti-tank missiles and rocket-propelled grenades. The system consists of four radars, they detect a munition flying toward the vehicle, and the system gives a command to fire a charge, which at the right moment explodes, forming a cloud of fragments, destroying the enemy's shell or weakening its impact. The mass of the MK4 rose to a record 70 tons. No other tank in the world weighs so much. During the last combat operation against the Hezbollah militants, not counting today's events, more than a thousand Russian-made anti-tank missiles were fired at Merkava MK-4 tanks. Only 22 vehicles, mostly of older modifications, were damaged, and five tanks were lost. That is, the effectiveness of modern Russian manned portable anti-tank systems against Merkava was only 0.5%. Now an even more advanced Kaz Mile Rock air cloak is being developed. The cost of a single Merkava MK-4 tank is $3.7 million. 
So why, having brilliantly proven itself in 2006, Merkava has yet to show anything in 2023? The internet's already full of videos of these burning tanks. We think it's for two reasons. The first is that the IDF banally slept through the attack. Many videos of battered Merkava show that the launchers of the Trophy Active Defense System are shrouded. Had they been in working order, many painful losses were sure would have been avoided. The second reason is the IDF's outdated tactics of using armored vehicles. Again, videos show Merkava as a target standing in one place and being filmed by Hamas from all sides to choose convenient angles for the attack. An anti-tank missile arrives, an explosion, and the tank is gone. In another video, a penny drone drops a shaped grenade on the tank and there's an explosion. The IDF does not analyze the experience of fighting in Ukraine and is unaware of what a formidable force drones have become. As a result, an excellent tank, which is undoubtedly the Merkava, has sharply deteriorated its reputation due to trivial disorganization. And now Cyprus has already refused to transfer Russian-made T-80U tanks to Kyiv in exchange for Israeli Merkava tanks, according to MASH. The reason was the events in the Gaza Strip, which caused reputational damage to the Israeli tanks. The IDF has a tough ground operation ahead of it in the Gaza Strip, where the Israeli military will be shot at from every corner, where Hamas militants using underground tunnels will suddenly appear literally from under the ground, strike, and immediately hide. Well, let's see if the mistakes of the first days of fighting will be taken into account, and if Merkava will be able to rehabilitate itself. From the point of view of technical equipment, it has everything for that. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up as a reward for our labor, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. There will be many more interesting videos about modern weapons.